Hello everyone, this is Panda here with a What I Learned video, and today I'm going to be talking about China and its social credit system, which is... new? Maybe? I think it's a work in progress. Now, if I were to briefly summarize what this social credit system is in China, I would have to say it's basically a system in which policing is not only done by the police, but it's done by the people. So in other words, it's the Chinese government's way of having people being controlled by people? NANI? I know that's not Chinese, that's Japanese. Now, if you have a good taste in television, like myself, when you hear the term social credit system, you would probably think of something like Black Mirror, right? It so happens that last year, Black Mirror had an episode titled Nosedive that was pretty much exactly what's happening in China right now. In that particular episode of Black Mirror, we look at a futuristic society in which social and economic factors are highly influenced by a social rating system in which every single resident, every single person I believe, has to participate in. Basically, if you are a resident living in the society and you don't have a high average of stars based on your peers' ratings, of course, then there's a better chance that you won't be able to take vacations or get the best products, the best services, whatever. But what I'm trying to say is if you want to take a vacation to like the Caribbean or a lavish place on earth and your average rating is 2.1 out of 5 stars, then well, you're not going anywhere, bitch. But obviously I'm not here to talk about Black Mirror and how great of a series that is. I'm here to discuss further about this social credit system. So let's head on over to the New York Post and see what they have to say about this. So here we are on the New York Post. Uh, they posted up this article two days ago talking about the uh, social credit system. Here you go. China's new social credit system is a dystopian nightmare. Ah! I'm basically going to read off a couple of paragraphs and then briefly talk about my thoughts. So let's start off with the first paragraph. Imagine calling a friend, only instead of hearing a ringtone, you hear a police siren. And then a voice intoning, Be careful in your dealings with this person! Would that put a damper on your relationship? It's supposed to. Welcome to life in China's social credit system where a low score can ruin your life in more ways than one. The first thing I noticed, especially from the first couple paragraphs, is the term privacy. I don't believe privacy has anything to do with this new system, and it's already looking pretty damn scary. Let's just get to the nitty gritty of this article. A low social credit score will exclude you from well-paid jobs, make it impossible for you to get a house or a car loan, or even book a hotel room. The government will slow down your internet connection, ban your children from attending private schools, and even post your profile on a public blacklist for all to see what the hell, what the hell, there is no privacy whatever, whatsoever in this. What, what, what's going on? What the hell's wrong with China? I believe this paragraph is the most damning of all the paragraphs in this article, which truly shows the intent behind this new social credit system. Individuals can earn points, for example, for reporting those who violate the new restrictions on religious practice, such as Christians who illegally meet to pray in private homes, or the Muslim Uyghurs, Uyghurs, I, I don't know how to say that, and Kazakhs in China's far west, whom they spot praying in public, fasting during Ramadan, or just growing a beard. Just growing a beard? Holy shit, really? Oh man. All you guys who have beards out there, and I guess some women who have beards, you, you, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus had a beard. You gonna exclude Jesus from having a beard? Are you serious? I have a particular phrase for this kind of activity. It's called snitches get stitches or the alternative bitches get stitches. Of course, you can look at this article on your own time and formulate your own opinions about this, but I just want to sum up this article with this last paragraph. In the words of China's Global Times, the hypothetical theories of the West are based on their ignorance. The massive social credit system, it goes on to say, is simply beyond the understanding of Western countries. From that article and the other articles I've read thus far on this system, it seems to be more of an exaggerated and exhaustive use of vigilantism. It's as if to say that every single person in China is going to be a new Batman. If they see something wrong happening they're gonna report it they're gonna get appraised for it and they're gonna live a better lifestyle because of it some people will agree with China and say oh this is great because now everyone is held accountable there will be accountability at all times others such as myself will argue that having this type of system in your country will basically give the freedom to everyone to snitch on each other and everyone's gonna be in jail. Everyone's gonna be on the street without a home. 
people are going to starve to death, even though they already are right now. I, I understand, but there will be more people in these predicaments because of your system. China, you may think that this is going to foster social trust, but honestly, I don't see that happening at all. If anything, people are going to be afraid of each other more than they already are now. Pretty soon, all you're going to see is just everyone in jail. How's that going to boost your economy? How's that going to boost your relationships with other countries? How? How? I ask you how? There are two things that I've learned from this. The first being that we should never take for granted the creativity and imagination of media sources, such as Black Mirror, the George Orwell's 1984, and even, yes, Minority Report. Along those lines, we all have to realize that we are very individualistic, very unique to ourselves, and our thoughts and opinions are not always going to be on par in contrast or even in comparison to others. The second thing I've learned from this is that even though I live in the USA where it's not the greatest place to be right now because we have quite a bit of division, a lot of argumentation going on, etc., etc. At the very least, I don't have to fear for my life every waking moment, every waking minute, uh, hour, month, day, year, m whatever, whatever. I don't have to fear that someone's going to snitch on me and get a better rating for me saying something controversial or doing something stupid. So in other words, it's okay to be here living in the USA right now, even with the division amongst us. And for those of you in China, I'm sorry that your government's being a huge dick with this new system. They don't realize that it's going to affect so much more, so much more than everyday living. And I really am sorry for that. And I hope you can, you can deal with this because that's something I don't think I personally could deal with. That's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you learned something as well. And until next time, I'll see you all later.